the question is how to prevent sodium hypochlorite accident sodium hypochlorite is a very potent tissue irritant one of the important properties about NaOCl is that it is a tissue dissolution it causes tissue dissolution which is so characteristic and that is the reason why it is used as a as an intracanal irrigant okay but one thing that we need to remember is since sodium hypochlorite is causes tissue dissolution it causes necrosis at such a rapid rate that you will not even know how much of the tissue has been involved and since it is a liquid it can flow very easily and soft tissue in general produces lesser barrier than hard tissues okay so sodium hypochlorite accidents are very very common in a clinical setup and the patient has a lot of problems with the entire issue, the entire accident that occurs simply because the edema that is created is on the face. So psychologically it affects the patient a lot simply because it looks very ugly. So what happens is this edema that, hap that is formed, it looks very scarring and has a very bad impact on the dentist. That is why you should try to prevent to have any such accident occur during your root canal therapy. When you are using sodium hypochlorite, you usually dilute it. You do not, even if you say that you are using 5.25%, you have to use it at a particular, even if that is the concentration that is used. Any amount of sodium hypochlorite is going to cause some amount of tissue dissolution. Even if you dilute it even more and you use it with saline, it is going to create some form of dissolution. In when it comes to hypochlorite, you cannot mix it with water. This option is out. Why? Because water is much more hypotonic than the normal tissues. So even if you have achieved a particular concentration of the agent, it is going to cause hypotonicity, which because of which it is going to cause shell shrinkage if the material or if the irrigant is flown into the normal tissues. Second is mix it with saline only. Like I said, even if you mix it with saline and saline is isotonic, it has the property of tissue dissolution. So even if there is a very small amount of sodium hypochlorite that is extended, that extrudes beyond the apex and goes into the periapical area, it is going to cause necrosis of the tissue over there and sloughing of the epithelium. That is the reason that you cannot allow this to happen. Third is ensuring that the needle is bound to the canal. You cannot allow that to happen simply because if the needle is bound to the canal, it is going to be very difficult for you to remove the needle back from the canal. That means to say that if you are irrigating the canal with a particular irrigant and the needle of the can, uh, needle of the irrigant, sorry, irrigation needle ends up being lodged into the canal, when you are trying to remove the needle, it is not going to come out. So, when you are going to be irrigating it and it is tightly bound, it has a tendency that it might spread into the periapical region and it can cause untoward events over there. That is why you ensure that the needle is freely floating in the canal and it is not bound in any aspect to the canal walls. Lastly, you assess the flow back and check the canal regularly. This is the right option. Why? Because you want to see now what as endodontists, what we do is you irrigate the canal with sodium hypochlorite and you want to ensure that the canal through black backflow, sorry. So what happens is if this is your needle and if this is the canal space, you are irrigating. So the irrigant goes like this and it should flow back. And that flow back is extruded from the canal orifice. So if you are able to achieve that, that means you are in the right direction. Secondly, you after irrigating, what you do is you do not want the canal to be wet because you cannot obturate wet canals, you have to obturate dry canals. So what you will do is you will use back pressure. That means you will use the syringe and you will push the handle of the syringe, you will push it. That is the piston unit, you will push it backwards or you would pull it towards you so that you are able to remove whatever remaining irrigant solution that is there and the canal is completely dry. And that is the reason, that is how you check the canal regularly. 
In addition to this, you should remember to use rubber dam because when you are using backflow, the sodium hypochlorite, if it actually gets extruded from the canal chamber, from the pulpal chamber, and if it goes into the normal epithelium nearby, it is going to cause necrosis of that tissue. So that is why usage of a rubber dam is very important. One more very important key trick that you can do is you can place your suction tip at the region where your where your uh, access cavity has been prepared, and that suction tip will suck out or it will take out all the remaining irrigant that has come out from the canal. 